To be honest about it, we're in it for what we can get. Blessing. Right? Heaven. Right? Mansion. Right? Seasons. <laughs> we're selfish. We're in it for the wrong reason. Even at that, God loves us. And what he is doing, he's sent forth the spirit of his son in us. And through his spirit, he is conforming us into the image of Christ. That's the goal of the Christian life is to conform you to the image of Christ. Not that you can have a better day. Not that you can get a blessing or have a good season. I mean, all of that will happen. Don't worry about all of that. But that's not the goal of it. The goal of it is the revelation of, of Christ in you. Just like the goal of the branch is the revelation of the vine. And the end result is grapes. When you see grapes, they call it the fruit of the vine. They, they don't say the fruit of the branches. Even though it came and was revealed through the branches. When they see love, joy, peace, goodness, faithfulness, temperance, gentleness, self-control and all of that. When they see all that in your life, they see Jesus revealed in you. So... Can't nobody make you sin. They can't. And if you fell down this, this morning or today, or last night, you can know where you stand. You can say, Lord God, is me. Standing in need of prayer. Instead of staying there and laying there, you're saying, Lord God, more of you. Less of me. When we are open, receptive, and available to his life, then he can fulfill. Feel his purpose in and through us. So I have been crucified with Christ. That I have been crucified with Christ is me united with the devil because of sin. That was put to death in Christ. Now, no man have the right to approach God apart from what he does for us. Grace, what is grace? Can anyone tell me what grace is? The best of your ability, your knowledge. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Can anyone add to that? We can always add to it because that is correct. Can anyone add to that? Unmerited favor. What else you can say about grace? Getting what we don't deserve, getting the opposite of what we deserve. But let me define it even further. I heard uh, a man by the name of Malcolm Smith say it this way, and I've been, and I grabbed it as my own. It is the, the gift of his presence that enables us to be and to do all that he requires of us. The gift of his presence. Because his grace doesn't come apart from his presence. You see, if I gave you these glasses, I'm independent of my glasses. But when God, what God does, he gives us himself. And that is why he could be said, he's at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That is why he said, Paul said, I labored more abundantly than all the apostles before me, but yet not I, but the grace of God. You see, it was his grace, his unmerited favor. Yes, it is the gift of his presence. Psalm 16 says, In his presence is fullness of joy, and in his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So we, we have been put in him. As a branch came out of the vine, we are in Christ. You're, you're there. You're in Christ. The Christian life is not defined by heaven. It's defined by Jesus. I often say if you get to heaven with the streets of gold, the gates of pearl, and you see the 12 disciples, and you see all of the, all of the things that you think heaven is made of, and if Jesus is not there, you're in hell. Because it's Jesus who makes heaven heaven. And what you need is not heaven, you need eternal life. And Jesus is the person of eternal life. He that hath the Son hath life. He hath not the Son, don't have life. This is eternal life that we may know you. Eternal life is knowing you, Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, your Son, whom you sent. So we need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need the life. What does that mean where you live now? What does that mean where you live? What does that mean to you? We need him for life. What does it mean that we need him for life? The scriptures like, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. What does that mean? We do all things through Christ, which means we relate to people through that intimate relationship with him. You will never have a relationship that will be as God desired apart from your submission to Christ. Never. I don't care how good she looks, brothers. I don't care how fine she is. I don't care how handsome she is. 
He is sisters. Apart from your intimate relationship with Christ, your relationship will fail. I'm not saying you won't stay together, but you'll never enjoy the fullness of that love that God is out in that relationship. Never. Why? Because you're trying to do it without life. Himself. That could go in every area. Your career. Now Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Again, life. That means he's the truth about everything. He's the truth about science. He's the truth about biology. He's the truth about astronomy. He's the truth about you. So if I want to know the truth about myself, I must know him who is the truth, who reveals me. So my life is revealed to me through my relationship with Christ. And so what I'm saying is this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be successful in life, you better have a relationship with Christ. Or you're going to fail. Simple as that. And if you don't, you're going to go out there and you're going to think you're so smart like all the generations behind us think they can make it without Christ. Brothers, you're going to marry the finest good looking woman. You're thinking because she this color, she this tall, she this height, she this fine. They got this much money and all that. You're going to be successful. Apart from that intimate relationship with Christ, who is your wisdom and your love for that particular person, you will fail every time. You will. But you will fail. Again, we need Jesus because he is life. And it's through him we live, move, and have our being. That means we deal with life in all its circumstances and condition from that relationship. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. You are in Christ now, which means that all of your life is lived from his life or in his life. Look at the branch of the vine again. The branch all of a sudden don't pop off the vine and think it's just going to go down the road and just bear onions, bear cucumbers. Its life is only in the vine. And as long as it's connected and open and receptive to the life of the vine, it is fruitful. That's what it was made for. And it's only when you're open and receptive to the life of Christ can you be fruitful in your relationship, in your business, in your job, whatever the condition or whatever the vocation, the only way that you can fulfill the purpose of God for your life, it is through Christ. Jesus said, without me, you can. What does these scriptures mean to us? We, they just stuck in the Bible. We don't believe them sometimes. You see what I'm saying? Without him, we can do nothing. So I'm not preaching at you like you... Uh, getting something to, you know, to entertain you, as I said earlier, this is to go with you. One way or the other, uh, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it in the council when you're going through your broken home, your broken marriage, the trouble in your home, trouble in your mind, dealing with, deal with it, burying you or some kind of way, marrying you or whatever. It'll come back around again because those counseling sessions, they could have been avoided if you had just paid attention the first time. Because counseling ain't never saved nobody marriage. Amen. Never. Counseling ain't never saved you the hardship. Never. For example, I can think about a situation a person was in serious uh, legal situation. By the grace of God, they got out of that legal situation. And then we tell them, don't do that no more. Guess what? They're going to do it again. Why? Because they're drawn to it by their own lust. What they need, they need a relationship with Christ who enables them to make the right choices and, and who will give them the deliver, the deliverance over that desire to have them acting that way. And until they come into the reality that only Christ can do it in us and through us, they're going to do their own thing. And somewhere sooner or later, they're going to mess it up. Sooner or later, just a matter of time. May not be the same thing, but it's not going to go the way it should. You see, so I can tell you not to do this. I can tell you to do this and I can be tell, uh, telling you to avoid this because of my experience. That ain't going to work. It got to come from the inside. We have to grow up and make the choice that I choose to be led of the spirit, that I choose to follow Jesus, that I choose to recognize that now my life that I now live, I live by the faith of the son of God. Total dependence upon him. Amen. And what God is really looking for. And in fact, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect. Now, what is the perfect heart? 
the perfect heart is the heart that's available and open to God and through which God can manifest his will and purpose. Not to say that you never made a mistake, not to say that you never do wrong, not to say that you ever slip or trip up. But the, your heart is open to be receptive to God, just like the branch is open to be receptive to the vine. The branch never produced, it only bear. It's a difference. Produce meaning that it originates from you. We rest in his life. We are open. So first of all, God is working in our lives as he gave us law to bring us to the end of ourselves. Failure is one of the primary ways that God works in our lives to bring us to the end of ourselves. You come to the conclusion, I can't live this life. And you can. And so that's what the law is given. Or man is trying to please God based upon his good works. As Paul said, the desire is present, but the will to do it I can't find. In other words, that which I desire to do, the good, I find myself doing the very opposite of evil. Then he said, who shall say, deliver me from the body of this death? Well, the thing is, is this. He said, thank be to God through Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation. See, the problem is condemnation. The condemnation is on the whole human race. That is, man under the, the judgment of God, under the power of sin and the devil. Now, so when man realizes his inability and his insufficiency, the schoolmaster the law and all the life situations that was given to beat us down to the end of ourselves to bring us to say, I can't, Lord. I yield, Lord. I surrender, Lord. At that point, you throw yourself on the grace and the mercy of God and say, Lord, have your way in me. You do it. And the fruit of the spirit is not the fruit that's coming from you. Right. It is born by you. That is, it's manifest in you, but it's manifested in you through your abiding in him, which is you living, unhindered, living by, by the surrender of faith to him. And he expressed his life. You see, the fruit of the spirit is the Holy Spirit expressing Christ in you and expressing Christ through you. But it can only happen when you are given up and told to surrender to him. So I must be to the end of me trusting in me and trust totally in Jesus. And he is the one who manifests his life in us. And so he manifests his life through a yielded or submitted believer. Your submission to your wife is through your submission to Christ, not the other way around. Every aspect of the Christian life is Christ at work in the believer. Every aspect of it. It requires the believer to come to total submission and surrender for it to be a reality. Because it is God at work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Every aspect of this branch's life is totally, every aspect of it. So in other words, the, the, the fruit, which is the intimacy that I show toward my wife, is coming from the intimacy that I have in Christ. We do all things through Christ, which means my loving her, my forgiving others, my whatever, it is through the spirit of Christ. The Christian life is not a bunch of beliefs. The Christian life is Christ's life revealed in the uh, heart of a yielded believer. See, that's what makes Christianity different from other worldviews. Other worldviews is based upon what they think and what they believe. The Christian life is dependent upon the real person of Jesus. Jesus is alive in the person, the Holy Ghost. Why do you think we need the Holy Ghost? If we could do it, we can't. We do all things through him. That is why Jesus used the grapevine. There is no part of the branch's life that is independent of the vine. No part of it. And he's saying the very same thing, to, the same analogy. He said, without me, you can do nothing. That means that the intimacy that I show toward my wife, the forgiveness that I show toward her, the understanding, the fruit of the spirit, all of those things, they are Revealed in me to the degree that I am submissive to him who is the source of it. That's the Christian life. We can be nice to people who are nice to us. We are kind to people who are kind to us. We talk about identity. We let our circumstances define us instead of Christ defining us. He is our uh, love and our joy, our peace and our patience. He is the kindness. I go to the Lord and I say, Lord God, this woman you gave me. Lord God, I'm telling you, Lord, this woman, man. But all that I'm telling her, he know it. And not only do he know what I'm telling him and what I'm saying may be true, it may be more than that. But he'll tell me my grace is sufficient. He said, I'm enough. He'll say my love for her is enough in you. 
My peace is enough to sustain you. The long suffering that I am in you is enough for this condition. That I can love her unconditional. You see, she don't have to change. You said it. The real problem lies in me not submitting to the Lord who enabled me to love her just like she is if she never changed. But the thing is, if I allow the Lord to love her through my life, then that life, as Peter was saying, the chaste conversation or lifestyle is enough to draw the unbelieving one if they see Christ revealed in the heart of a spouse. See, the point is, most of us are not, if I can use this term, we're not submitted enough to Christ to allow the revelation of Christ's love in us to draw others to him. Most of us don't have that relationship with the Lord. And so as a result, when they do this, we do that. They act up, we respond acting up. We'll say, if she hadn't said this, I wouldn't have said this. If she hadn't did this. And it's always us in response, not realizing that their action reveal their heart. My response reveal my heart that neither one of us are trusting in, in the Lord. And both of our hearts are hard toward God, even though she started or he started. The issue is not right and wrong. It's what the Lord is leading you to do. It's life and death. You see, eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is that you are standing in whether who is right or wrong versus submitting to the tree of life, allowing the Lord's love to prevail in your heart, that he leads you and direct your path, even to the point that we lay down our lives for the brethren, that his life may be revealed in us. That's the Christian life, which is a bit of pill for most people to swallow because we are selfish. That picture of Hosea, that was a picture of the unfailing, unrelenting love of God. God said, how many times have you went back on me, but yet I receive you? His love never fails. His mercy endureth forever. That picture of Hosea was just a picture of Christ. In fact, the amount of money that he brought Gomer back was a price of 30 pieces of silver. So the whole thing was that God's unrelenting love for us. Now, this is humanly impossible for you to love enemies. The, the Sermon on the Mount is impossible. It's impossible for man but not for God. That's why we need God in order to forgive and to go the extra mile and turn the other cheek, counting all joy to love enemies. And it takes the love of God in our hearts. The Christian life is a supernatural life. It's not a man just decide that he's going to keep a bunch of rules and regulations, try to do good and avoid evil, and so he can get a reward or blessing and go to heaven. The Christian life ain't that way. The Christian life is the life of Christ revealed in us. Where am I then? I'm a Christian. And it's Christ in your uniqueness that makes you who you are. Until you come to grips that Christ is your life, you'll never be the person that God called you to be. Just because you got money, you're not blessed. Success can only be measured in your identity, and your identity is Christ. Amen?